Hi, everyone. <laughs> it went live so fast this week. I'm not even done typing my little message here. Hello, 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 and welcome. My name is Lee Kara. This is Unleash Your Light. This is the second week of experimentation. I can already see that it's better. I am going to hang tight here for just a minute. So that way we can welcome some viewers. I'm going to share. Hello, Jaswinder. Hi, Leah. I know I said last week I was going to go out a little bit later, but I actually have a thing today around lunchtime. I'm getting interviewed for our local magazine. Hi, Linda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to take just a minute. Obviously, I'm live because I'm seeing all of you. Mwah. <laughs> but I am going to go ahead and take a minute and put you in my group. And uh, if you haven't joined my group, Unleash Your Light, please do. You can head on over to my page and uh, join the page over there as well. Kenya, hello there. I am doing well. And how are you doing? I hope it is all good for you. All right, let's see here now. I want to make sure that, does it look any better? It looks a tiny bit better than last week, but not too much, huh? I'm still looking a little, I'm going to have to try a different camera next week. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Like I said, I am experimenting with this lovely, uh, with this lovely little thing here. So, uh, <laughs> so bear with me, please. I hope as long as you can hear me that it will be good and you will be okay with that. Good morning, Sid. Good morning, Benjamin Bomadelli. Bomadelli Benjamin. Bomadelli Benjamin is the bomb, right? I like that. That's a good name. Some people have such good names. You ever notice that? Some people have really, really good names. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was very envious of people who had cool, unusual names, you know? I wanted to have a cool name. <laughs> okay, so we have a great show today. I am super excited to talk to you about this, and it is specifically going out to someone who joined us in the broadcast last week just briefly. I am not going to call him out by name, but I am going to send this to him on down low. <laughs> so I'm not putting him on blast. I think it's something that we all struggle with. Hi, Robin. Welcome. Robin Quarles has a great group as well. You guys, if you're interested, make sure that you reach out to her. Hello, Carla. One, one, one. This works so much better, you guys, going through this little app. For those of you who are wondering, I'm using Restream.io. And so it's broadcasting live here and on YouTube. If you are over at YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell. I think that's the way you're supposed to say it. You can put comments down below. Pamela, welcome. Yay, I'm excited. Um, and it's working pretty well. Obviously, the picture is not as good as I would like it to be. Um, I did get a suggestion that I use a laptop that's about eight years old, but the webcam is better. So we're going to try that next week and see if it's going to work out for us. But in the meantime, we're here. Hopefully you can hear me nice and clear. Let's jump into this topic. If you saw what the title was, this week we're going to talk about don't let your location determine your destination. Now, I like to rhyme. I'm a songwriter, so I like to rhyme these things. But that is a place of 5D versus 3D of faith versus what we perceive as our reality right now, right? So when we look around in our little world, we see exactly where we are, right? We might see that we're living someplace we don't want to live. We might see that we're not happy with the state of the world. We might see that we're not happy with the amount of food that we have or the money or anything like that. And Looking around and seeing that, looking around and seeing yourself in a place that you don't want to be. Hi, Rudolph. Welcome. Seeing yourself in a place where you don't want to be can be incredibly discouraging for anyone, not just people, regular people, but for spiritual people and for people in the awakening. We look around and see, I'm here. How the heck am I going to get there? We're going to start in the physical realm. But we're going to move it to the emotional, of course, and then you know I always take it to the woo-woo as well, right? <laughs> so I want you to think about this as 
where you are now, looking around, and if you need to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. You're looking around at where you are now and your level of satisfaction with where you are physically, with the things in your life physically in the material. And I know that a lot of spiritual people don't like to talk about the material stuff and none of that matters. But you know what? We live in a world that right now in this moment does have material needs. And so they do have to be taken into consideration. Should we focus on it more than the other stuff? I don't think so. <laughs> but there are many in this world who do. There are many in this world who literally that's their most important thing. They're on the grind. They're on the hustle. They're getting that money. That's the only thing they're thinking about. What happens when you get it? What happens when you get it, right? So that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic right there. So look around at where you're at and think about where you want to be. And it's okay as a spiritual person to think, I'd like to live in a great big house. Or I'd like to have 100 acres of land. Or I'd like to be driving a car that doesn't, uh, you know, conk out on me halfway to work. Hi, Monica. Welcome. It's okay to want those things. Good morning, Nancy. It's okay to want those things as a spiritual person. It really is. Those things will help us to do our work, to do our mission, and not have those worries of the 3D on our mind. But when we look around at where we're at, where at where we're at, and we look ahead and see, well, that's where I want to be. There are many people who allow where they are to keep them from even imagining that they can get to where they're going. So let's say that where you are is where you are, but it's placed now at the bottom of a mountain, okay? And you can see this little mountain going up. You see a little road going up over the mountain. Good morning, Susan. You see the little road going up over the mountain, right? And, and you know because your GPS says it goes down the other side of the mountain, and your destination is on the other side. Where you want to go is on the other side. Do you sit at the bottom of the mountain and go, well, there's a mountain between me and where I need to go. And uh, right here, I don't, I don't see, you know, any of the stuff that I need to be at the place that I'm supposed to be at, except for me to get myself there. So I guess I'm, it's not possible. I guess that I can't get to that other side of the mountain. Even though I can see the road, the road disappears at the top, right? You're looking at the mountain, the road disappears at the top, and you have to have faith that it goes back down the other side, right? And so if we look, are looking at our lives this way, Oh, Robin, yay! I love the Blue Ridge Mountain, you guys. So that's why Robin is talking about Fly Go to Blue Ridge Mountains. They are beautiful. So that's, this is how we're looking at our lives. If you're looking at where you are and where you want to be and not seeing how you can possibly get there so you don't even start the journey, you're limiting yourself. You are allowing your location to keep you from your destination. And this is a really important thing because what is it that gets us over the top of that mountain? It's faith in knowing that the road continues on the other side without seeing it. And this is what we need to have when we're on our journey to where we need to be. So we're, like I said, we're starting with the physical. So if you want a life that has more abundance, if you want a life where you have the material means to help others, because most of us in the spiritual realm will say, I don't want the money for me. I want the money for all the people I can help. And we have very lofty plans on how we can do that. We need to help ourselves also in that plan. Add in yourself and know that if you can imagine it, it already exists as an outcome. We're going to go real woo-woo, timeline, dimensional, doo-dah thing right here. Okay, you guys ready? Stay with me. <laughs> so... Our brains are constantly broadcasting, right? We're always broadcasting a frequency, right? Now, anything that you can imagine with your mind already is an outline, an outcome on a timeline. Already exists as an eventuality that you have lived out because all time happens all the time.
okay? All time happens all the time. And it's our frequency and what we're thinking that it puts us on these different timelines. And we can jump back and forth between them because there are infinite numbers as our frequency changes, right? So we can jump into the timeline where we're making all of those right decisions to take us to the end. If our frequency believes that our destination is achievable, if our frequency is aligned with the frequency of the destination of where we're supposed to go. So as we sit in our location, we can have faith and create that reality of the outcome that we have in our mind. Now, will it be exact? Probably not, because there are very few people in this world who can focus so deeply and adjust their frequency so perfectly to get to exactly where they need to be, right? I mean, that's like, you need to be real good with your stuff. But we all know that our thoughts are affecting all the time. We all know that our thoughts are creating reality. So how did you get to this location? You got here because of what you did in the past, because of what you did yesterday. And if you don't like the location that you're at, you can prepare for the next location by having faith that it exists for you. Now, knowing that it exists for you is a whole other thing because now we take it into the emotional, right? And anybody that you watch on manifestation and say it's all about believing, it's all about knowing when the secret came out like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, oh my gosh, did the secret come out 30 years ago? When the secret came out, the secret of the book was you just have to believe that you already are that that you already have that, that you can already achieve that, and that you are achieving it right now. And by shifting your thoughts to an I am, I have right now, that's what puts you towards that goal, right? Exact same concept. Exact same concept. It's literally faith. It's literally having faith that that destination exists there for you. Now, like I said, we're going to pull this into the emotional believing that you deserve it, recognizing your own doubts, recognizing your issues. A lot of us, especially in the spiritual community, have money blockages, right? We have money blockages because we think people that have money are bad. They don't use their money for good. They're greedy. We don't need money. We're hippies. We don't have to do that. It's all love and light and it doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. We'll come up with a lot of things in our head to kind of override that those thoughts on money. I did for years and I'm shifting that now through my own, you know, discovery. You guys know I flop out my own journey right here, you know, and just Put it out there. Um, so that shift of believing that you deserve to be in the destination that you're looking for, to be in the destination, believing that you deserve the blessings, the abundance, the outcome, to be the speaker, to be the person who moves mountains, to be the person that people are, are looking to for help to be even just the person who is able to freely receive these messages and live in that space of love, both giving and receiving, believing that you are worthy of receiving love is a huge thing to overcome in this journey of faith. Raphael, I am so glad to see you. Let's see, true spirituality is balanced. We have a monetary system. You can avoid greed and cruelty, absolutely. And especially if you have to hurt someone, for sure. Um, illusion is made up of spirituality and reality is simple. Be in a life without fear. That is absolutely gorgeous. And that's what I'm getting to right now, analyzing your fears, analyzing that place where you are now, right? You may, and I said at the beginning, this is for a specific person who co I have had a conversation with who is not in the spiritual community, though. And, but he did pop in on the show last week. He looks around at where he is and he looks at where he would like to be and he says, well, I'm not there. So I'm not gonna get there. That's not, that's not 
you know, I haven't made it yet. I haven't become this, that, and the other yet. I haven't been successful at my trade yet. So why try? I, that, that doesn't exist for me because I failed or because I didn't get to, because I didn't do it. Because you're looking around at where you are and saying, this is it for me. There is no other destination. I can't even imagine that there's something better than this for me. Now, luckily, most of us in the spiritual community, we do uh, have those tools to kind of overcome that a little bit. But emotionally, the, one of the things, the first things that we need to do is look at our destination and say, how did I get here? How did I get here? Because those decisions that you made yesterday got you to where you are. And if you don't like where you are, you need to examine how you got here. You need to figure out what lessons were you supposed to learn that got you to this place? Because we are on a journey. We are on a journey and we need to keep moving forward. We need to always see the destination that's out there as well as enjoying this moment where we are. This is one of the things with manifestation that I really kind of disagree with. They talk a lot about affirmations, right? And they talk a lot about, especially in goal setting manifestation, they'll talk about, I, I, I have a million dollars, 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 whatever it is, right? That is not actually focusing on what you need to do to get there. Once that's in your mind, the universe already knows what you want, where you're going. You don't have to repeat it to the universe a thousand times a day. You don't have to write it a hundred times on the blackboard like Bart Simpson. The universe knows where you want to go already. So what you should be focusing on is your actions. Absolutely, Robin, it's all about motion, is your actions in this moment that propel you forward. And I think I mentioned this last week, I, I had read this meme and it literally like boink, like shifted something in me that uh, about an archery teacher and his student and the student kept missing the mark and missing the mark and missing the mark. And he couldn't figure out why he wasn't hitting it because he was focusing so hard on that target, right? So if we think of the target as our destination, it's focusing so hard on that destination. And the teacher said to him, you are so focused on, on the target that you are not focused on your actions right now. And that is a huge, huge shift, especially in that law of attraction world where they're telling you over and over again to focus on the outcome, right? There's two parts to that because you also have to focus on where you are now, what got you here. And while there's lots of things you can do to transmute and heal and get energy work and hold on to crystals and everything. The real work is in the human heart. The real work is in the space where the divine is within us so that we can let it loose and unleash it. And so figuring out how you got to where you are, whether it's you're losing your house, you lost your job, you have no money, or whether it's you're in a, you have everything you ever wanted, but you're lost emotionally or whether it's a family relationship that you are not able to figure out how did I get to where I am and why are we not speaking? And you have to look inwards. Look inwards, hi Cindy, at yourself and how you got to where you are. People who study billionaires and millionaires and successful business people, actual sexual, Actual business people, not the ones that just make money off of dividends, but actual, like, I built my business. They always say that they learned more from their failures. So how did they learn from their failures? They examined them. They looked at what they did. They looked at what they did right, and they looked at what they did wrong. And the next time they tried, they changed their approach. The next time they tried, they put those lessons into action. And we can do this not just in the physical, but in the emotional by looking at those places that we've been that have gotten us to this place that we may be unsatisfied in or that we may know that there's more. Now, we may not always know the road of how to get to the destination, 
And that alone sometimes stops people because they don't know how to get from where they are to where they're going. But guess what? You don't have to know the directions. You don't have to know where you're going. Take a right here, take a left here. You don't have to know that. You just have to know that you're going to get there. Or at the very least, you're going to get somewhere as long as you take the steps, as long as you move forward. Yes, you know, Pamela, so many of us will cover up where we are, in our, even in our own minds, by joking about it and, uh, you know, just kind of write it off as, oh, well, that's just how I am. But I did a show called Waiting with Purpose. Um, maybe it was close to a year ago now. It's on the page. It's on my YouTube. And um, when you're waiting with purpose, when you're in your location and you know the destination you want, but you don't know how to get there, you can prepare for where you're going. So, for example, I, right now, am a chick on disability who's sitting here doing shows live for free for the last two or three years, writing a book, writing, you know, several books, <laughs> you know, doing posts online, and yet knowing that all of this is leading to speaking in front of audiences, to bringing the message to the masses, to engaging with people in a very different way, right? And knowing that, I have no idea how to get there. I was a bartender for most of my life, bartender, server, worked in restaurants. I don't have the experience to do that. And if the universe gave me a million dollars tomorrow, I wouldn't know what the heck to do with it. Hell, if they gave me $20,000 tomorrow, I wouldn't know where to invest it. I wouldn't know how to run a business with the numbers. I wouldn't know any of that, right? So my waiting with purpose is to do this, speak as much as possible, to speak publicly now as much as possible. I've been going out into my own communities and, and speaking, doing public speaking, right? And then in my own personal life, I'm learning about money. Robin, I'm sorry that you're getting booted out. Try YouTube if you still want to watch. I'm learning about money. I'm learning how to run a business. I'm watching videos on how to properly market. I'm watching videos on how to properly use the software that I have. I'm reading articles on money management. I'm paying attention to what's going on in the business world and, and learning from the mistakes of others because I'm preparing. Now, if I look around right now, what the heck am I preparing for? <laughs> like, in my, like if I looked at my location right now, I would be saying I have no need to know how to run a business because I don't have a business. I have no need to know what to do with a lump sum of money because I don't have it like that. I would look around and say, why would anyone care what I have to say? Because look at me, right? I'm just some chick who worked in a restaurant for a long time, pushing 50. And yet, that is not how I view this space right now. This pause, not pause, but pause. <laughs> That's what I'm doing in this space, is preparing myself for that future. I'm getting my health in line as much as I possibly can. You know, I'm doing those things in my regular life that are preparing me to move forward. And each time that I do that, it is a step forward. Whether it's physically or emotionally, I suffer from anxiety um, because of my, you know, walking with a cane and the neurological stuff. I, I have a really hard time with anxiety. But you, you guys who have been watching me, you know. I have been working on this steady, 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 steady for the past two or three years. I have been working so hard to shift my perception of that anxiety so that I don't live in that space, so that driving a long distance doesn't make me feel like I'm going to have a panic attack, so that being in a room full of people, I can handle that. Standing in front of a crowd with 5,000 people's energy coming at me, if I wasn't prepared spiritually for that, that would be overwhelming. I have a friend, a very good friend, who is a reader and um, a medium, and she was doing lives on the regular here on Facebook, and she did a live where she got like 100 people in it. 
And the energy was so overwhelming for her that she got off the air and was shaking and did not go back on the air for quite a while. Hi, Richard, welcome. But Monica, software equals mind hardware equals the brain. Ready to update software programs. I love that. I love that. New operating system, so everything works a little bit better, right? When you are looking at where you are, know that where you are is not forever, whether it is physically, emotionally, or spiritually, unless you choose for it to be forever. Unless you choose to believe that there is nothing more for you. I've pulled out every trick from my hat. I've done everything I can. Throw your hands up in the air. Forget it. I'm done. Or I've spoken to this particular person that I can't get along with so many times. Forget it. I'm done with it. And you file it away without getting that finishing bit of healing, even if it's just for you. Or I keep losing my temper and I can't figure out how to do it. Forget it. This is just how I am. I'm just going to accept that I'm a hothead and a loser. Or stupid. Or fat. Or poor. Once you start thinking, I've tried everything and now there's nothing for me to do. So I guess this is where I'm supposed to be. You've limited yourself. You've limited yourself. Is the universe limited? No. Universe is limitless. Is the divine energy limited? No. Divine energy is limitless. It is the human us that limits that divine energy. And divine energy can overrule you if it chooses. However, usually you have to make the choice to allow it to be limitless, to allow it to work in your life. One of the things that I used to say a lot was you have to invite the light. It's easy. The darkness is always there, the darkness. The things, the human stuff that we tend to look down on, that's there. And that'll come whether you want it or not. That'll come based on the way that you're thinking, the way that you're doing, the way you're moving through the earth, through, through this world, right? But you have to invite the light. You have to invite divine. You have to allow it to be hope within you, to be knowledge within you, to allow it to give you that faith, not religion, faith, belief, the knowing that that destination exists for you or some variation thereof and that it's worth it to start the journey and that we must start the journey. And that's a level of self-awareness and self-confidence and self-esteem and self-love and self-acceptance that we really as humans have to work for because our entire life teaches us we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not strong enough. That's not for me. Life tells us exactly the opposite. But we have to know that we are divine. And we have to invite that divinity to embody within us. We have to invite that divinity to embody within us to affect the frequency of our thoughts, the beliefs that we are constantly thinking, the words that we are saying. I drive a beater. I drive a little beater car. <laughs> and I honestly, I love it. I think it's adorable. <laughs> But looking at that car, I recognize it's probably not going to last very much longer. But if I walk around and say all I'm worth is this little crappy car and I'll never get a nice car and, you know, I'm poor. I'm just, this is what I drive because I'm poor. No. This is what I drive because at the moment that we purchased the car, that was where I was to be able to purchase it. But that's not where I'm going to be a month from now. That's not where I am now. And that's not where I'm going to be a month from now. And that's not where I'm going to be five months from now. And that's not where I'm going to be two years from now. Two years from now, I might be driving something that is much newer that I don't have to worry about breaking down. But if I believe that I will always drive a POS, that's a luxury POS, y'all. If I believe that I will always drive a POS, then I will always drive a POS. Those are my thoughts. Those are my words. 
and those are my beliefs. Because I wouldn't be able to see the destination of having a newer car that I don't have to worry about. Or a hybrid car, or an electric car, or whatever it is that we have in our minds to save the planet, right? Or no car. Knowing the destination is good, but it takes faith to get on that road and walk towards it, or drive towards it in your little beater, right? <laughs> Nancy says, I've written letters to people who refuse to see past their nose and then burn them. You have to heal with or without them. A thousand percent correct, Nancy, because forgiveness and healing is not for them. It's for you. Because a lot of people don't care if you forgive them. They don't care. They don't want to know about it. They could care less. They don't forgive you. They might not be giving you a second thought or they may be focused on hating you their whole life. But that is their journey to walk, not yours. And so knowing that you have to heal with or without them, that's a huge thing. We have the holidays coming up. Y'all know I always run my show around the holidays, how not to murder your family over the holidays, where we talk about that sort of stuff because your family installed your triggers. But you can use this same situation for that. If you know that where you are today is that every time your family gets together on holidays, there is arguing and fighting and someone throws a wine glass and a fist fight breaks out and everybody's screaming and yelling and then they all go home and say, oh, that was a great holiday, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you sit in that space and think, this is just my life. This is just how my family is. This is just how it's going to be. Every single time I go there, I'm going to get in a fight with so-and-so and this person is going to insult me and I'm going to react by pulling their pigtails because that's what we did when we were kids, blah, blah, blah. But... If you can recognize that there is a space and a destination where your meals will be more peaceful, where people won't get into fist fights and throw wine glasses or scream and yell at each other or fight over politics or whatever it is going on in your life, if you believe that that's a destination, you can shift where you are. You can shift how you behave. You can, while you're in this space, prepare for where you're gonna go. So maybe part of your preparation is removing those triggers that they installed when you were a kid or recognizing that you regress into 11 year old uh, prank, pranking, rude, uh, you know, monster at the table that you were at 11 and recognizing that you're not that person anymore and when you go home, you don't have to be that person no matter what they expect recognizing that maybe a conversation about politics is a bad idea. And if someone brings it up, maybe you should just choose not to engage. Or maybe you go about it in a different way. Last week's show was about allowing people space to be wrong, allowing them space to be wrong. And having that understanding and that forgiveness for where they are and where they're going. Right? Shifting what you're doing in your location and how you view it as just a pause rather than your end game. And seeing your destination over there and having faith that you will get there. Having faith that the universe will take you where you need to go. Like I was saying, you may not know how to get there. You may have no idea. But if you set your intention on becoming what you need to be to be in that space, Becoming more of yourself, self-confident, self-loving, self-accepting, without judgment for you. Once you can see that, once you recognize that, and you are sincere in your service, the universe is going to put those next steps right in front of you. I had no idea how I was going to get from writing a book that I've been giving away for free for the past four years, five years, six six. Holy guacamole, I wrote this book in the fall of 2012. I've been giving it away for free for seven years. For seven years. And I had no idea how I was going to get it into actual print. No idea. I don't know any publishers. How the heck am I supposed to? I don't have 10 grand to be printing it out myself. You know, I don't know how to do all that kind of stuff. But as soon as I was determined, as soon as the universe said to me, if you're going to be speaking publicly, you need to have a book in print. 
you need to be able to give something to take away from whatever it is on your big thing, on your journey, on your big speeches, on your, you know, when you go out into public. People need to have that in their hands with this knowledge that we've given you to share. And you know what happened? I met a publisher at a meeting that I went to for local business people. Now, I don't have a business, right? I don't have a business. I don't charge for anything, really. So why am I meeting for business people locally? Because I'm preparing. Because I was going to glean as much knowledge as I could from these folks who are already running businesses. And I went, and I sat, and I chatted, and I interacted. And one of the people at the meeting was a publisher. And she was so impressed by my motivation, by the things that I spoke about, and the advice that I was giving her about social media because, surprise, surprise, evidently I know a little bit more than some other people about it that don't do this on the regular, that haven't been doing live shows for all that. I never thought it was anything special, but there was a lot of information that I had that she could use. And she was willing to barter services for most of the cost of this printed book that I need to continue on my journey to the goal that they put into my mind in 2012. Hi, Kathy, welcome. Hi, Richard, welcome, thank you. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I didn't know how I was gonna pay for it, but I took that meeting with her. I talked to her about it. We worked together on it. And when she read my book, she is a very uh, she goes to church at a regular Christian style church. She was moved by some of the things in my book. My book is non-denominational and she found value in it. Someone who is not in our spiritual community. And that to me was incredibly validating and one of those signs that yes, this is exactly what we wanted you for. To catch people who are falling through the cracks between religion and and the awakening to find those people who know there's something more but haven't figured out how to put their finger on it and even though i didn't know how to get there now the little steps are putting in front of me i reached out to some places locally and i started speaking here locally you know i joined a local spiritual center and now i have a venue that i can book at any time and they welcome it they welcome me going and speaking live. All of these things are, I couldn't have even like recognized how to get this done a year ago, heck, six months ago. And yet here I am on that journey now, getting closer and closer to where I am. And like I said, today, I'm gonna go and be interviewed by our local magazine because I'm gonna have a little, you know, couple page article about the book coming out, about what I do, about my public speaking. Uh, again, this is not something that I could have known what steps to take. Maybe I could have if I searched for it, but I really didn't even know where to search. And yet, because I have my service in mind, because I know that that destination is someplace that I'm gonna get, even if it takes me 20 years to get there, I know that that's where they want me to be. It's not gonna take 20 years because there's like a, a time thing, you know? Knowing that and having that faith in the destination is allowing the universe to put the steps in front of me. And I'm paying attention. And I have my eyes wide open. And this is what you guys need to do. If you are in a space where you don't know how to get to where you're going, you don't know how to get there. Your very belief that that is your destination will allow the universe to put the steps in front of you. Thank you, you guys, so much. I appreciate that. I am so honored to be on this path. I am grateful every single day for the changes that have been inside of me personally. Because I can say I'm a different person today, but really I'm more of who I actually am today than I have been maybe ever. And every day, more of me is revealed as I do my preparations and I get rid of some of those things that I'm carrying, some of that, those misconceptions and those misbeliefs about myself and about the world. 
everything is energy and spiritually we know that and yet taking that from knowledge to faith taking that from something that we know to being something that we can live that's where the key is that's that faith it takes you to the next thing I'm gonna do a show on this with a manifestation I am versus I feel and saying I am something is good and saying it when you don't believe it can crack open the door but if you're in a space where you logically know it and you you know that it should be that way and you spiritually know I am XYZ I am love I am whatever it is that you're saying the next step to it is not just saying it you have to feel it it's conviction conviction when you meet someone with conviction they move you even if their conviction is something that you don't agree with <laughs> they may move you in a negative way but would they believe it with all their heart and soul that's conviction and that's what takes your manifestation from I am from I am to it is to I feel is that extra layer and that's what takes you from this space in your location is to know that that destination is for you to know that you're supposed to be a successful playwright to know that your art is supposed to help people heal and and it will get out there to know that the gifts that you have been given will be utilized for the universe's good for the good of the planet you must have extreme faith in your purpose in your journey and where you're going hi Kathy welcome everybody who doesn't already follow Kathy make sure you follow Kathy she does amazing shows on um, nutrition and spirituality and the way that, that the food works together with our frequencies and I don't know all the details because it's a little more technical than I am but Kathy is awesome you guys so make sure you go over and uh, like her page and watch her little videos she has a beautiful beautiful um, piece of property and a, a bed and breakfast I'm not sure if you call it a bed and breakfast I always forget the name but I'm sorry my neurological stuff sometimes gets me absolutely beautiful Kathy feel free to put in the link if you want if you're still in here or if somebody else knows it you guys this journey is life-changing it's heart changing it's spirit changing it's transformation and once we get to that destination you know what there's another mount there's another destination for you there is no end game on this planet until we transition from this flesh it's always learning it's always growing it's always shifting it's being open-minded it's being open-hearted it's not allowing what you see around you and what you're feeling right now to limit you because where you are is not a permanent place how you feel is not a permanent emotion you won't always feel grief you won't always feel sadness unless you choose to always feel that and I've done show a show called better or bitter you choose a better way you choose a different line you choose to shift your emotions and your perspective and you have free will to do that so you can choose to heal or not to heal PS that's another show you can choose to take steps forward or to stay right where you are and curse the world we have a choice and just as a side note I, I see a lot of people posting about how miserable the world is and why do I have to be here at this time and why is it like this and I don't want to live here anymore take me home why do you think you woke up early why do you think that you are the awakened why do you think that you feel these things so deeply is it to grieve them is it to mourn them is it to hate them because when you hate what's going on in the world and you hate the people who do those bad things what energy are you sharing and I'm not saying you have to love pedophiles and what they do 
I'm not saying you have to love the situation in the world. But what I am saying, it is our duty to send love to that. It is our duty as those who are awakened to send solution energy, to have empathy for those who commit crimes, to understand that it may not be of their choosing, and to send that healing. Forgiveness and healing is not condoning the actions of those who sin, of those who hurt, of those who commit heinous acts, of the situations in the world. Why do you think you're awake early? It's not to rant and rave and be angry about the world. Because the world does not discriminate anger towards goodness and anger coming from goodness. Anger is anger. Hatred is hatred. Love. Forgive. Empathy. That's the holy trinity of emotions. Unconditional love. Forgiveness. And empathy. And it's difficult. It's not easy. Because the bad things that happen trigger us because of things in our life. And the difficult things that happen often are limiting to us. And we view that and we think there's no way to a peaceful world. There's no way for the shift to be birthed. There's no way that this is going to happen with all this stuff happening. And then we get, oh, angry because we don't see it happening quickly enough. And blah, blah, blah. And we get in that state of outrage and injustice and anger. And now what we're doing is adding fuel to that fire of hatred that's burning in so many today. When a lot of them just really want love and they're angry because they don't have it. They're angry because they feel unwanted and unloved. That's not every situation, so I get a lot of pushback on that. But why else would we be awakened early if it wasn't to help shift that, change that, to view things in a different perspective, just like we are in our own life? All right. I love the world too, Cindy. I think it's a beautiful place and there's so much more good than not good. And we have so much more in common with other humans than we have not in common. I can never figure out how to word that properly. They don't give me that exact wording. They always say it backwards. Hi, Tabula Rasa. Welcome. I'm so grateful for you guys coming out. Look at the location that you're at. Look at where you're going. Know that where you are is not where you'll be forever. Do not limit yourself on your journey. Do not believe that because you look around and see what you see, that that is everything for you. Your future is there, and it is your faith that allows the universe to put the steps in front of you, whether you know how to do it or not. The universe can be like your divine GPS. When you start out to a destination, I don't know what turn to make, right turn, left turn, but that GPS is going to show me. Turn right here, turn left here. You know what happens if I take a wrong turn? It directs me back to the road as long as I know that is my destination, and I will get there no matter how long it takes me. All right, I love you guys. You're hearing data in the background? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So next week, I am going to try to use a different computer. It is much older, but I am reassured that the camera and the computing stuff inside of it is better for broadcasting this way than Restream. So hopefully it will look much better. I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful for every single one of you. Look at where you're going. Embrace that destination. And then love every bit of the journey. Prepare for where you're going. Embrace where you are. This is a beautiful time to be alive, and we are super blessed to be here. Mwah. I love every single one of you. I will be back next Thursday, and keep an eye out for shows with my mama bear because I think she's coming back full force, y'all. <laughs> okay, let's see here now. Um, let's figure out how to end this broadcast. There we go. Thank you so much, y'all. Have a fabulous weekend.